So I have always wanted a Porsche 911 Turbo for the longest time, but obviously I could never afford one because in my opinion, like those cars are ridiculously expensive. And a few years ago, I was finally able to afford one because uh, it had higher miles on it. And when I say higher miles, I don't mean like 30, 40, 50, 60,000 miles. The car that I found had 80,000 miles on it. I never really talked about the mileage on that car because I was always scared that something was gonna happen. I didn't wanna say, okay, this car has 80, 90,000 miles on it. Something bad's gonna happen right now and have the studio audience say, oh, that thing is trash, don't get it. But I ended up getting the car and I absolutely fell in love with it. I lowered the car uh, and I did some interior stuff and that's about it. Now the interior looks like a, you know, uh, an old Jetta. I love the interior personally. So I started doing mods to it, but I never touched the engine because at 80,000 miles, that car was still under warranty. Fast forward the clock three years later, that to this day is still the most reliable car that I have ever owned. I have yet to see the check engine light in that car, except for one time where rats and mice, whatever, got into the wiring harness and started chewing stuff up. Now I keep it indoors, but it is absolutely insane just how rock solid reliable that car has been. Today, that car has 107 thousand miles on it that's right i drove that thing almost thirty thousand miles and that might not seem like a lot of miles but it actually is a lot of miles because most people don't drive their porsches really that much which i'm starting to be confused as to why they don't because they're beautiful driving cars unlike the mclaren that is not a beautiful driving car it is not reliable no matter what anyone tells you and i think i've seen the check engine light more times in that car than any other car i've ever owned uh, so the rumors are true about McLarens. They're not terribly reliable cars. They're not well built. Uh, thankfully, I sent the car over to uh, Kevin from McMedics and he took care of me. Uh, he took it, got it all fixed up and I was able to do a rally with it. Now that the car is out of warranty, I kind of wanted to take things up to the next level. I have finally decided to modify my most reliable car ever. And everyone tells you specifically not to do that. I decided to, I think it's gonna be a good idea. Um, one of the things about this car is that it's kind of boring in a sense. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Uh, it's fast, but it's not insanely fast. Remember this car was built in 2016. Cars nowadays are much, 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 much faster and more responsive. So today I'm gonna do some breathing modifications to the Porsche. Uh, it's gonna be a stage two plus. We're doing intercoolers. We're doing exhaust. We're doing Y pipes. We're doing all the things to help the car breathe. And at the very end, I'm actually gonna remove about maybe 30 or 40 pounds or so from the car to you know keep the weight down and to enjoy the driving experience a little bit better. So um, without further ado, let's go for it. But before we get into the episode, I just wanted to thank Squarespace really quickly. They've been a sponsor of the channel for years now. It has tons of web page tools to help with your needs and all these awesome page templates to match your style. But you can also start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. You can choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. It's tailored to your brand or business and optimized for every device. You can launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimize SEO tools. You show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. And they also offer flexible payments. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. You can accept credit cards and PayPal and Apple Pay. And in some countries offer the customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Head to www.squarespace.com slash rich rebuilds, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions, no matter how crazy they are.
I hope you guys like that ASMR. Today we're gonna to install parts that are all about airflow, the larger intercoolers, which increase flow area by 40%, and we're gonna install the Y pipe and inlet hoses, which also give better airflow, and more airflow is more power generally. But last but not least, we also have the exhaust, which is probably the standard for the best air movement for really any car. Good weight savings too on this one. And here's the part of the install I hate the most, removing the turbo manifold studs off of a car with over 100,000 miles on it. Let's lube them up first and see what the odds are of be removing all of them without breaking them. Do you have any guesses? Anyone? Well, guess thing time is over. I actually broke half of them off. Oh. Really happy. There's cats in it. It's actually not bad at all. In case you were wondering, this is the stage you need to get to in order to do a basic air filter replacement on a Porsche 911 Turbo S. You have to remove the entire rear bumper, which kind of stinks, which is also the reason why the labor rates are so high, so they can really get you for stuff like this. All right, Dre, what'd we find? Oh, oh. There I they think are. this that's, is rocks, right? That's rattling, all right, yeah. All right. Any animals in there? Not yet. Nope, not yet. Out of here. It's a baby. Oh, there's more rocks in it. And leaves. Yeah, because there's no, think about it, Joey. Anything that comes in here, it just gets sucked in. What's that, a ruby? Oh, a piece of a tail light. That is hilarious. Oh, so that's someone's tail light. Oh, there's a, there's a bee. And another bee. Jeez. And a beetle. Okay, so this is the old intercooler that Joey took out. And, oh, just like a, dude, look at that. Jeez. Flying fish. I don't think we even made animals like that anymore. All right, so now, and here's the new intercooler. It's significantly larger and heavier. Oh, man. I thought we were Isn't that insane? Away. Wow. Look at the end tanks. Oh, yeah, it's way bigger. Yeah. Gotta cool all that hot air. There's a difference on everything. Mm. Look at the restriction that was here. It like squishes down a little plastic thing and then this one is just straight through. Mm. Okay. Wow, nicely done. Yeah, not bad, right? Here's the old filter. Here's a new red filter. Look, Joey, it's red. Well, it must mean it's fast. It means it's fast, go fast. So let's talk about the elephant in the room really quick, the exhaust. No matter what method I use, I can't seem to get these off, including the two nut method and both extractors. It's just not coming off. It's too rusted on there. I'm probably just going to have Joey Weld the nut on to back it off. This is what the process is like installing a larger intercooler in a stock housing. It's a literal process and the intake cones no longer fit. The company asked me if I wanted carbon fiber intakes that will fit, but they were a thousand bucks and I politely yet firmly declined. I'll just modify them myself with zip ties, of course. Got this exhaust from eBay. Uh, a lot of the, the sponsors don't allow me to get cool stuff, so I just got this used one off eBay. I think it's a Tubi. I don't know what Tubi means, but who gives a shit? Uh, this is the new exhaust. That's the old one. A lot of weight savings there.
I can't even begin to explain just how good this car sounds now. I mean, it sounds like a completely different car. Before, the car just sounded like really nothing, but now you could really hear every single turbo spool, every single pop and bang from this exhaust. You gotta hear it, listen to this, right? Gunshots. This 100% made me fall in love with this car again. I'm gonna give it a quick stab off the line and uh, just so you could kind of get a better feel for how it is. I know you guys never didn't feel it before, but the power this car has now is just insane. And it's not even fully tuned yet. I just have a stage one Cobb map, which is the basic of the basic. It feels like this car has literally gained 100 horsepower. And this isn't even with the Pro Tune. With the Pro Tune, there's probably at least another 50 horsepower to unlock out of this car, maybe even more, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna give a quick stab. Uh, windows are up. Uh, maybe you can get a feel for a better feel for how it sounds. those pulls now I need gas but there isn't a single check engine light this thing has almost 110,000 miles on it if I go over here there we go it says the check high level brake light it goes mine remaining distance now it's saying engine fan uh, isn't plugged in which I understand because I didn't plug it in and yeah there we go that's where we're at amazing the beauty of Porsche considering I forgot to put the cats back on so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that uh, once I get back to the shop I'm gonna cut the cats off the old exhaust and weld it onto this one it, the car doesn't sound any different yeah there's a slight uh, minor rumble but not really if someone were to take this car overnight and swap the exhaust out uh, as I'm driving normally I might not be able to tell because this is just it's just the beauty of it so right now uh, I'm giving it gas, and when I let off, nothing happens, right? So, accelerate, let off, nothing. I hear a lot of wind gushing noise. It is a huge difference on the intake side of things. But if I go now in the sport, and I give it a little gas, now I hear the pops and bangs, you know? But even then, it's really not that bad. Like for, for a car who's uh, who was neutered in terms of the catalytic converters, it doesn't really sound that much different. Hold on. You hear a little turbo spool for sure, but nothing crazy. It's funny, now on the highway, it sounds like a proper race car. Listen, you hear, all you hear are gunshots. Ready, one more time. I'm gonna do it again. Gunshots in the tunnel. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. But now I'm in Sport Plus. Let's go back to Sport. It's not as whiny, but there is still some whine, I guess you could say. But when I take it off of Sport altogether, this is what it sounds like. Right now it's in Sport. 
no drama, no fuss, no muss. The car just kind of sounds normal. So I gotta say, I really like this so far. Really, really having a good time with this. I mean, just listen to this real quick. Hold on, ready? So for my last trick, I wanted to do the last performance modification to this car. Hopefully ever, I don't really wanna to touch this thing anymore, but one thing I wanna to do to the car is I wanna add lightness. So the battery, which is probably one of the heaviest removable components to the car is up front. It's a super heavy battery. I'm gonna replace it with this lithium anti-gravity battery. It's actually super light. It's actually saves some serious weight over the other battery. So I'm just gonna take this one out, put the anti-gravity battery in and uh, save an additional probably 30 or 40 pounds. Oh, come on. Holy shit. Ah. 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 Oh. Damn. If you could see this or not, but this thing is insanely heavy. Ooh. That's an average car battery. And this anti-gravity. Literally, I could toss it around. See? This thing. Not happening. Literally one-handed. That's it. Go. I just saved about 30 pounds right there. So, and if you didn't know, uh, these batteries have the built-in wireless jump starting. So pretty much if the car dies, right before going dead, uh, the battery will put itself to sleep uh, and it'll actually save uh, enough battery for emergency starts. Then you just push this button, it wakes the uh, battery back up and that's pretty much it. So another really cool feature of this battery besides the weight savings. Okay, there shouldn't be any errors, but I'm gonna try it anyways. Let's see. You gonna say anything? Nothing. You need gas, I know. That's it. Nothing here. Nothing to see. Well, there we have it, folks. The 911 Turbo S is modified with Stage 2 Plus, and I think I'm going to leave it just like this. I think only time is really going to tell us just how well these mods are going to hold up. Again, I really didn't want to do this because it's an ideal daily driver. It's nice. It's quiet. It's efficient. It's reliable. But I went ahead and I did all this stuff to it. Thankfully, it's only breathing modifications. I have the larger intercoolers, uh, the pipes. I have the intake, the filter, the exhaust. I think these are very tasteful things to do. I aren't really gonna go against the, the mantra of the Porsche, but I'm hoping this holds up really well. I actually, part of me likes where this kind of looks. So I might leave the rear bumper off for a little while and just put the plate on it. Cause you know, I can't really ride around with no plate like I did last time, but I think this is great. I'm really enjoying this car so far. I think it sounds awesome. I might get a little bit better tips for this exhaust, but overall I was kind of nervous at first, but after 18 to 20 launches on this thing, it's holding up very well. I think I might drive it for a while and see how it is. Guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys at SEMA next week.